Hey guys, so we're back with another video and I want to talk about something that I know is super important to many of you and it's difficulty in forming bonds and having relationships. Now, I'm talking about people with both schizoid and avoidant tendencies, which are people that have decided at some moment in their past that it's not safe to have social interactions and they might desire these interactions or they might not desire these interactions and the reason the video is for the both of you is because we're going to talk about why we we feel like it's unsafe to form bonds and what our actual existential needs are when it comes to this area of our life and how we can approach this whole relationship thing in a different way that might bring us more happiness, more connection, even if we're scared. Now, before we get started, I just I just want to let everyone know that the Inner Mastery Lab cart is open and you can get some pretty interesting early bird discounts and special benefits if you acquire the program before the 1st. Starting January 1st from the 13th, the cart will remain open, but the price is going out up permanently. And we start officially on January 13th. So if you want to enjoy the holidays, get, you know, the stress of the year off of you, out of you, get focused for the new year and start the new year with a bang, then click on the link in the description below and you can find out everything you need to know about the Inner Mastery Lab. And it's a program for children of narcissists that is aimed at teaching you how the way you were raised is affecting your ability to be happy and to be yourself and to connect to your true essence and to build a life based on your true essence even today. So click on the link below if you have any questions. You can just send me an email at this email here and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay, so I want to start off this video by telling you a little bit of a personal story about my difficulties in relationships. So my whole life, uh, I was a, the sort of person that had very intense hobbies. And as a matter of fact, years ago, right when I finished college, I knew deep inside my heart that, that, that I didn't really want to study business and I ended up getting my graduate in business. And I was lost, I didn't know what I wanted. And so when I sat down and I started asking myself certain questions about what I wanted to create in the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years in my life, I thought the perfect lifestyle would be if I created a digital business because this would give me time to be at home all day, dedicating myself to whichever hobby I might be in love with at that time. Now, I actually did create this. Eight years later, nine years later, I have a digital business. I, I This is what supports me. It's been what supports me for, for a few years now. And I achieved what I wanted. I created a structure, a financial structure, where I could spend my free time, not only working from home, but um, also dedicating myself to my hobbies, which have got to do with the arts. Now, what surprised me is that having achieved my exact goal that took so many years to build, to materialize, I was profoundly disconnected and lonely. And really, I had proven to myself that I was capable of reaching my goals, and I didn't know that, many, many years ago, I proven to myself that I was going to reach all my goals because I just have this sort of determination for it and I don't give up. But what I didn't know about myself and what I did not want to admit is that I needed other people in my life. And what got me thinking one day was when, when my sister told me, Tati, all you do from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, there are activities that don't involve other people. You created a life specifically to be by yourself and to exclude relationships and I got and that got me thinking now when you don't have human connection and this is something that we all need okay it's not something that you decide you need or you don't you decide you don't need we are human beings are social creatures and we function in a healthy way when we are connected to one another and the human psyche depends on feeling connected to other psyches in order to feel like it even exists, to feel nurtured and to feel safe. And when you don't have this connection, when you don't have relationships that nurture you, 
because you don't have relationships, you're isolating yourself, or because you have them, but you have so many blocks, so many barriers against love inside you that you don't really let people get close or, or you manipulate people and you must have power over them in your relationships, which is another way of not getting close to people. When you don't have this connection, it's like there's this this yearning inside of you, this this hunger that is always looking to be fed. And we will find many ways of feeding this hunger, often through compulsive behaviors around acquiring narcissistic supply. So you might really need to draw attention to yourself, uh, be it through getting people's admiration, even if you're doing things that you don't really like, but uh, you know, people admire me for it. Or even if you're like being the biggest victim, well, you know, I guess being talking about my bad health or the, all the time or my problems all the time isn't the best thing, but at least people give me um, sympathy, you know. So you can try to fill that hunger. You can try to appease it through narcissistic supply. You try to get attention for your body, for your achievements, for your skills, for being aggressive, for being a good girl, a good boy. There's many different ways of getting external validation. You can try it using drugs, you know, um, because you, you're carrying this inner sense of, of devastating loneliness and disconnection and you want to feel connected to something and if you don't have a human being that you feel safe with or know how to connect with, well, you know, drugs, they feel like a hug inside your heart <laughs> and you can have a relationship with a drug that has got your back because it's always there when you need it. You can have, <clears throat> you can try to fill this, 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 void, you appease this hunger uh, through being in a fantasy world because we all have this energy, right? The thoughts that we have are energy and our energy wants to expand. It wants to go outside of us. It wants to express itself. That's what every kid wants to do. It comes to planet Earth. It wants to love and be loved and it wants to do this through its self-expression, right? And, and through being accepted by other people. So if your energy isn't going outwards, isn't bonding with other people, it, it needs to do something. It needs to bond because that's how your psyche works. And you're going to start having relationships with internal objects. And then you're going to spend your days in your fantasy land or intellectualize, in, in, in intellectualization. My God, intellectualization. There we go. <laughs> Because it is a necessity of our psyche to bond with something. Okay, no external objects. I'm going to be off in fantasy land and I'm going to bond with my internal people, right? So you're talking to your imaginary friends. You can try to fill this void through achievement. You can try to fill this void through sex. You can do all sorts of things. And in the end, you will find there is something missing. There is something missing. And it's not a matter of just having people in your life. It's a matter of being able to be yourself and to satisfy your needs with another person so that it can feel safe for you and you don't have to withdraw. Okay, so what I didn't want to admit to myself for the longest time is that I needed people and Achievements were not the same as connection and really my achievements did not have meaning if I didn't have a person to share them with. It's almost as if it doesn't really matter what you do. If there's no one to witness that, then it's almost as if that thing doesn't even exist, you know? I didn't want to admit that I needed people because people are unpredictable. They aren't like my hobbies that I can sort of control. You know, they, they do whatever they want. You don't know what they're thinking. I didn't want to admit that I needed physical touch, non-sexual physical touch, and that just the warmth of someone's skin up against mine, you know, to to even, and for you guys who suffer from a derealization or, or depersonalization, you, you will understand what I'm saying. Sometimes you need someone to physically touch you to know that you exist. When you're off in your mind the whole time because you don't have relationships with people, but you do have relationships with your internal objects, you start feeling that physically you're disintegrating, like you don't exist anymore. So we actually need people for a number of basic ego functions and because our mind works that way. And I, I wanted someone else's perspective. You know, when you're, when you're by yourself all the time, you get kind of lost in your cyclical thoughts. 
And oftentimes you have this problem that you that is like it seems impossible to solve and you've had it for the longest time, but you just talk to one person that sees the world in a different way and all of a sudden you have insights and you're like, wait a second, this is doable. So I needed people for my personal challenges to become bearable because it's so much harder on your own, right? And I needed people um, to know that, to share little things throughout the day. I needed people to, to know that I was important in someone else's mind, in someone else's, in someone else's life. And I needed people for all of these reasons and for reasons that I'm sure I can't even identify because I'm sure we connect to one another in levels that aren't so easy to explain in words. Now, I was very scared to admit these things to myself because I made a promise to myself when I was younger and I remember when I made this promise. I remember one of the times I made this promise to myself. When I was a teenager, I realized in a very unstable, 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 yeah, there, there we go, guys, I'm sorry, I speak more than one language and sometimes it's like, oh my God, I don't speak any language. But in, a, in very unstable environments, and my life was very unstable up to a certain point, I just decided that I'm not going to invest in anything outside of myself because clearly it can be taken away. And I thought this was like the most ingenious plan ever. And I thought, well, that's it. I am going to invest in my inner world. I'm going to study. I'm going to be in here. And I don't care about anything outside of myself. And it got to the point where like I didn't care about my appearance. I wouldn't even like brush my teeth or change my clothes. I abandoned anything outside of myself because I thought it could be taken away. So you can see that um, <laughs> that this was a huge deal for me, for me to feel safe. But the thing is, when you exile yourself into your inner world, it's unbearable. You cannot tolerate this connection. And then if you're scared of connection, right? Because if you come from... Um, and if you if you were raised in a way where you did not feel regularly nourished, you might be quite scared to form bonds with people. Either because trauma has got attachment trauma has got you thinking that you don't need people, or that you will never have people, even if you do need them. There seems to be like this invisible law that says, oh, everyone can have relationships, but not you. You're weird. You're not like other humans. You're not gonna have relationships, or you feel that this early attachment trauma has got you thinking that you'll never have people unless you lose yourself. So when you think about relationships, you're like, Ugh, oh my God, no, I'm going to be invaded. I'm not going to have a say over who I am, what I do, how I spend my time and my energy. Or this early attachment trauma has got you thinking that you can never have people unless you control them and you force them to act the way that you want to act, you want them to act, because people aren't going to naturally choose to be in your life otherwise. So all of these, um, all of these ways of thinking, are signs that in your first attempts to bond with someone, you were so severely frustrated that part of you had to literally come up with this, with this idea. That you didn't need people or that there were only these specific ways of getting people and then in that way you could feel safe be it through isolation through being codependent and uh, emptying yourself of yourself so that you may be what another person needs of you and, and in that way get people or being narcissistic abusive whatever and forcing other people to be what you want them to be now if this is your case if, if you've identified with with anything I've said here, if you have felt this devastating loneliness, disconnection, if you have any one of these thought systems um, that dictate to you that you can't have relationships because they aren't safe, I would like to leave you with a few, a few questions, okay? Some things for you to contemplate. First and foremost, I'd like for you to pay attention to your body right now, to what you're feeling, to the actual sensations inside of you and throughout your body, I'm, I'm talking about muscle tension, how your breathing's going, your heartbeat, if you can feel that any way, you can put your hand on your chest. And I'd like for you to observe 
how you react internally in terms of what you feel when I say the word relationships. When I talk about people in your life, relationships, what do you feel physically? Is it tension? Is it a warm feeling? Do you feel terror that you're going to be invaded? Is it fear of being abandoned? Or is it terror that you're going to be abused? So deep down behind the attachment trauma, there's generally the fear of being invaded and not being able to be yourself and to use your time and your energy as you please. The fear of being abandoned or that love being unstable or the fear, the terror of being abused, of, of getting hurt of that love coming with an ulterior motive. It means that if you accept that love, at that relationship, you're going to owe something to the, to the other person and that's suffocating. That's like being invaded and not even know exactly how because you don't know what you're supposed to owe the person. So tell me how that feels in your body when I say the word relationship. And, and then I'd like to ask you, I'd like to ask you, when was the first time that you felt like that? When those sensations come to mind, what else comes to mind? Is there something that you went through when you were younger? Primarily, how did you feel when it came to your primary caretakers, your mom, your dad? Is the way you feel now a reflection of how that relationship worked? Like in my case, for example, for the longest time, I was like, oh, I don't want people. And it was a mixture of two things. It was a mixture of I'm too weird. I'm not part of the human family. Everybody's going to notice how weird and how much of an outcast I am. And, you know, I don't fit in anywhere. And it was also a, 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 a part of um, if I have relationships, I'm going to have to follow other people's rules, pay attention to their timetables, and I'm going to feel invaded. I'm not going to be able to be myself. So these were strong enough fears to make me withdraw. Now, once you've identified what you feel when I talk about relationships and bonding with people, and also when you felt that, and you can see what the primary sensation around having relationships with your primary caretakers were, then I'd like for you to go a little bit deeper and ask yourself, underneath that feeling of being invaded, abused, instability, or whatever it was, what was, that, what was it that I really needed? What was it that I really wanted, you know? And when you get in touch with that younger aspect of yourself, you might find, like I found, that I wanted, what I really wanted is I wanted to feel safely connected to my, to my mom and to my dad. I didn't, I, safely connected means I wanted to know that they would be there when I needed them. And like I had step, a stepfather who had, health issues so he was always dying so I, I wasn't safely connected to him and and my mom wasn't very available in the way that I thought that she should be and I wanted to be safely connected to adults so that I could go out and play as myself and do what I wanted with my energy and um, I wanted to feel like my individuality was valued enough for my caretakers to let me be an individual, right? So that was my core need that I did not, did not satisfy, wasn't satisfied when I was a kid. So basically, where did this take me and where would I like for this to take you if you want to go there? Having identified what you feel when it comes to relationships, how that's an echo of early attachment trauma to your, to your first caretakers, and what need was actually ignored, I would like for you to transform that need into a list. And it's a list that's very important because it's a list of specific characteristics that, that have to exist in any relationship you're going to have with people. And here I, I, want, I want to say two things, okay? First, we do need people I know that's scary, so what I am proposing to you is that you don't quit the game, but you learn how to play. And the way that you learn how to play the game of identifying, cultivating, choosing healthy relationships where you don't have to repeat those attachment traumas of being invaded, abandoned, or abused 
is by gaining clarity on what needs, what existential needs of yours must be satisfied within the relationship. When you do this, when you accept that you need people, when you accept that you don't know how to socialize and choose good relationships and exist in them in a way that you can be yourself and that um, your attachment trauma has got you ha has got you thinking really twisted things about how much you need people or how you can have them in your life. And this is all the result of early needs that were not met. And once you know what those needs are, and once you understand that the point of relationships, okay, this is the second thing I wanted to say. The first one was, don't quit the game of having relationships, learn how to play. The second thing is, not that you're gonna learn how to play, give your relationships a purpose. And the purpose that I give relationships, I call, I call it the sacred relationship. And the purpose of the sacred relationship for people who have a hard time bonding is that it's within that relationship that you're going to satisfy all of those core existential needs that have not been satisfied since you were a kid. So in my case, this came out, uh, This I, I put all of these characteristics of a sacred relationship into a list. And I, I'd like to share that list with you so that you can make your own list. So first and foremost, I must feel safe to be myself because that need was not satisfied. So that's what I need a sacred relationship for. A sacred relationship has the purpose of healing past attachment trauma. The relationship must be a safe environment for all of my shadow parts and all of the other person's shadow parts. That means that there's a safe space in the relationship for conflict and for disagreements and for weird emotional reactions because we both invest not only in ourselves, like I'm, I'm going to be investing in my mental health, He's, he, her, she, they're going to be investing in their mental health, but we also invest in the relationship as a separate third entity, a, a place within which all of our personal drama and all of our shadow parts can pour into and be accepted and be felt and be worked through. There must be a balance in give and take. This is part of healthy relationships for me. A sacred relationship must be balanced in the give and take. Um, another thing that's, that's super important for me that, that defines a sacred relationship, the other person must be as invested in his or her life as I am in my life. That means they can't come with huge voids like, oh, you know, I hate my my, my, my job, my family, where I live, and please, Patty, uh, fulfill my void because I'm not taking steps towards cha changing these situations and I really need you to fix everything for me and make it all go away. No, the person must be working on themselves as intensely as I am working on myself and being a complete person, a part of me, we're not really complete because we're interdependent so we depend on other people. This person chooses to have a relationship with me and vice versa. The relationship must be a means for self-actualization. And for the advancement of my personal spiritual goals and for the other person as well. This means I don't have idle relationships. I have more superficial, let's go to a party relationship, but I have rich, nutritious relationships that have the specific goal of helping me reach self-actualization for the other person as well. Another characteristic is I must feel a loving energy flowing naturally from the person to me. I don't. This means I don't have to be like rationalizing whether the person really loves me or not because you know there's so many crappy things in the relationship that I have to like come up with like reasons why I'm in it, and it's it's more of an intellectual process. This is quite. This is generally what we do when a relationship isn't that great, and we have to come up with with reasons to justify why, why we're in it. So in a healthy, sacred relationship for me, okay, there's conflict, but I can feel the loving energy of the person at a visceral level. I don't have to like be trying to convince myself of anything. Okie dokie. Woo. So I want to know what your insights are. I want to know if any of this made any sense to you. I want to know about any wins you've had when it comes to feeling safe enough to have relationships. I want to know if you enjoyed the idea of the sacred relationship as something that you consciously choose that is meant to heal early attachment trauma by offering an opportunity to satisfy those needs that haven't been satisfied since that early attachment trauma. 
Let me know about your comments. If you like the, let me know about your process in the comments. If you like the video, then like it, share it. If you think it might help someone, subscribe to the channel. Um, there's going to be lots of other videos on, on all sorts of topics. And don't forget to, if you want to be part of the Inner Mastery Lab, you have a special discount and some early bird benefits till the 31st, January 1st, the price goes up. So click on the link in the description below and let's work together for 10 weeks from, from January to March so that you can start 2020 with a completely different level of self-care and self-love. Okay, guys, that's it for now.